Hello, Calculus Kids. This is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson, we're learning about implicit differentiation. Before we actually do the differentiation part, you have to understand what an implicit equation is uh, and an implicit equation compared to an explicit equation. So I've got a couple examples here for you to just write down real quick. Explicit equations are ones that make you swear because you're so frustrated with them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not true. So in, these are explicit equations where you have one variable in terms of another variable. Implicit equations can have multiple variables going on. So again, so it could be like f of t equals something in terms of t, t squared minus 3t, such and so forth. That's an explicit equation. But not all graphs are functions. And so when they're not a function, we need to have a way of writing them implicitly. This example here, that's just a circle. If you remember circles from pre-calculus, ellipses, things like that, those are all implicit equations. And there's a specific way of taking the derivative for these types of things. So to help us out, I've tried to set this up uh, I'm hoping this does not confuse you, but there's actually this thing dealing with chain rule that helps us with implicit differentiation. Let's start with something we know, the derivative of x. We know the derivative of x equals 1, but let me show you why. When you take the derivative of x, Leibniz notation, which is what this is, when we use Leibniz notation, it's kind of nice because it looks like a fraction. Technically, this is not a fraction, even though it looks exactly like it is, but we can use it like a fraction. So the derivative of x with respect to x is like dx over dx, which just equals 1. Now, when we take the derivative of y, if we were doing it with respect to y, then it would also equal 1. But when it's with respect to x, it equals this, dy over dx. The derivative of y with respect to x equals dy over dx. All right, how about this one? The derivative of x squared. We know the answer is going to be 2x, right? But this is the step we've been skipping, where it's actually dx over dx included with it, which just cancels out and gives us 2x. So here, what we're doing is we take the derivative of y squared, which is 2y, and then you take the derivative of y with respect to x. It's kind of like it's a chain rule thing. The 2y comes down, and then the derivative of y with respect to x. That's where this comes from. All right, last one here. Uh, this thing is going to equal e to the 5x times 5. Just the derivative of an exponent is itself with the chain rule times 5. But here we'd have itself, e to the 5y, times the derivative of 5y is just 5, times the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, so let's put this into practice for our first example. First step is to take the derivative. Each time the derivative of y is involved, we're going to include a dy dx. All right, so anytime you see a y that you're taking the derivative of it, you'll have a dy dx. So this one, the derivative of y squared is 2y, and then because we took the derivative of y, we're also going to include a dx, dy dx, excuse me, minus, and now the derivative of 5x cubed is going to be 15x squared, equals, and then the derivative of 3y is just 3, but then we have to include a dy dx. All right, that's how you do the first step, just taking the derivative. Now, the rest of this is just algebra stuff, because we're trying to get dy dx all by itself. We're finding dy dx. So steps 2, 3, and 4, this is just algebra. So get all the dy dx's on the same side. I said left side. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. Just get them on the same side. So uh, the, these two terms, that term and this term, say 2y dy dx, and then subtract this one over, minus 3 dy dx is going to equal, and now this term doesn't have a dy dx, so I'll add it to the other side and give myself a 15x squared. All right, now that we have dy dx is all on one side, we can factor it out uh, if necessary. Sometimes there's only one dy dx, so this is a lot easier. But in this case, we'll factor out the dy dx, and then that gives us 2y minus 3 equals 15x squared. And then the last thing is solve for dy dx by dividing both sides by what's in parentheses there. So my dy dx for this example is equal to 15x squared all over 2y minus 3. Now this is the answer to that. This gives us the slope of the tangent line at any point we want. Before, we only had x values. Now we have x and y values. So in other words, if you want to know the slope of the tangent line, it's not just the x that you have to know. You're going to have to know both the x and the y to plug it in to an implicit uh, derivative. All right, let's try this out on your own. In fact, 
using the practice I just did, I want you to pause the video now and try this first one on your own based on the table from above because it's very similar to that. And then we'll check back here and see how you did. And there's your answer here. You can check your work. I've tried to show all my steps. so You can kind of go through it and see if you get the same thing I do. Okay, number two. Uh, this one we have, let's just go ahead and take the derivative. The derivative of sine is cosine. So you have cosine of x, y. And now you're going to take the derivative of the inside here. So when we take the derivative of this, if you notice carefully, you have two variables being multiplied and that requires product rule. So we have to multiply, uh, use the product rule of derivatives. So the derivative of x is going to be one times, and then the y is left alone, plus, and then we're gonna say that x is left alone, x, and then take the derivative of y, which is dy dx, right? I'm going to write y prime just to show you that sometimes you can do that if you wanna save yourself some work, dy dx. I would caution you though, be very careful. Some of my solutions, you'll see this, this y prime, but when you don't write dy dx, it's easy to lose track of, of where you have a y prime versus a y. So just be really careful if you choose to use a y prime. Okay, let's keep going. So we did the, the chain rule here, the product rule and the chain rule here. So then we say equals the derivative of 10x is just a 10. All right, now we're trying to solve for dy dx, or in other words, this y prime. So I will divide both sides by cosine xy. And that leaves me with just this, which is y plus x y prime. And then that equals 10 divided by cosine of x y. All right, so now we have this thing. I can subtract the y over. So I get x y prime equals, now watch what I do here. I'm gonna write this as 10 secant x y. Instead of writing it as divided by cosine xy, you could just use the reciprocal identity and write it as secant xy. And then uh, what was I doing? I subtracted the y over, so that's minus y. And then my final answer, the y prime, or in other words, dy dx, because that is y prime, is equal to that whole thing, 10 secant of xy minus y all over x. All right, so not too difficult. You just have a lot of things going on where we're including everything we've been doing so far with derivatives. Now let's figure out how to get the actual slope of the tangent line. So we're going to come up with the equation of the tangent lines for this graph, this circle, x squared plus y squared equals four. Remember that this is r squared, the radius. That's where that comes from. So the radius is two, so that's why it's two squared, four. Okay, when x equals one. But to do this, what I want you to do is I'm gonna have you draw really quickly here on this circle, put two dots at x equals one. So if we go to x equals one, you have a dot straight above it and straight below it. Those are the two places where x equals one. We're trying to come up with these tangent lines. So just kind of sketch those briefly real quick uh, on your graph so you can see your tangent lines that we're going to come up with. So remind ourselves that we're going to have, this is the equation, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So we know the x value is going to be one for both of these two coordinate points. So there's no question there, we know it's a one. What we don't know is the y value. So to get that, let's go ahead and plug in the one. So let's not worry about any derivatives yet, just plug in our one, solve this, y squared equals three, so y will equal plus or minus the square root of three. So there's our two y values. So let's write a coordinate point for this one. It's going to be one comma square root of three. And then down here we have one comma negative square root of three. Okay, we have our two points now. Now we need the slope. The slope comes from the derivative, dy dx. So that's our next step, find the derivative, 2x plus 2y, I took the derivative of y, so I have to include a dy dx. And then that equals, the derivative of four is zero. That's a common mistake, that when you have a constant, you accidentally write the four down, don't do that. The derivative of the constant will be a zero. Okay, so solve for dy dx, uh, and that's going to equal, I bring this over, I get a negative 2x over 2y, so that simplifies to just negative x over y. There's my derivative. All right, so now what do I do from here? This gives me the slope of my tangent lines, so I just plug in. If I wanna know about this point right here, my slope for this, for this first point, I'll call that m1 and I'll call this slope m2. So my slope for m1 is going to be negative, the x value is a one over, and the y value is a square root of three. So that one is 
negative 1 over square root of 3. And then my second slope for this line, I have to use that coordinate point. So it's negative 1 over negative square root of 3. Or in other words, a positive 1 over square root of 3, which makes sense because that line is going to be positive. So I have 1 over square root of 3. And then now let's write the equations. So y minus square root of 3. And that's how we use implicit differentiation to come up with slope. You have to plug in both the x and the y coordinate points into your, your differential equation. That's what this is. D dy dx equals, this is a differential equation. The last thing to talk about is uh, horizontal and vertical tangent lines. We have a horizontal tangent line if the slope is zero. We have a vertical tangent line if the slope is undefined. So if you remember, a horizontal line would have a slope of zero. A vertical line would have undefined slope. Now I want to be careful. I will make this easy in this lesson, easy as with respect to just because the derivative is undefined does not mean it's a vertical asymptote. Excuse me, not asymptote, vertical tangent line. It could just be that the derivative is undefined because maybe the graph has a cusp or some type of corner, and that's why the derivative is undefined. But for these, this problem set and what you're going to practice, I am letting you know right now, if the derivative doesn't exist, that's where we're considering it a vertical asymptote. Okay, we'll go later on in unit five, we'll get into how to tell if it's a corner or cusp, things like that. So find all the horizontal tangent lines for this one, vertical tangent lines for this one. Notice both equations are the same, so we only have to find dy dx one time. So here, the derivative of this, we have 6x plus the derivative here is 4y, and I have to include a dy dx. Don't forget that, right? Because I took the derivative of y, and then equals not 16, it equals 0. Now solve this over. And I'm going to get dy dx is equal to negative 6. So negative, I'm going to reduce this, 3x over 4y becomes a 2y. Okay, I skipped some steps there, sorry. That's just the reduced fraction after you solve for dy dx. All right, so what happens? How do we get a horizontal tangent line? Horizontal tangent line happens if this derivative equals 0. So how does that happen? Only if the numerator, which is in this case is 3x, only if the numerator is equal to 0. So when you solve that, you get x equals 0. Now, this is not what you circle. That's not the answer. Because if you remember, a horizontal tangent line, a horizontal line has an equation of y equals something. It's y equals. This is what the coordinate point x equals. I need to figure out what is the y value if x equals 0, because that's where it happens. So I take my original equation here, and you substitute in an x equals 0. So it becomes 3 times 0 squared plus 2y squared equals 16. Solve for y. Uh, let's see, that's gone. Divide by 2. y squared equals 8. So y is equal to plus or minus, there's two of them, square root of 8. So I have two horizontal tangent lines. For whatever that graph is, these are the two lines. And they happen when x equals 0. Okay, now vertical tangent lines. We already took the derivative. So vertical tangent line is when this derivative is undefined, right? So when I have negative 3x over 2y, and that is undefined, well, when does that happen? It happens if the denominator is a 0. So I'm going to take 2y, set it equal to 0, solve it. That happens when y is 0. Now remember, vertical tangent is a line straight up and down, and that equation will be x equals something. So I'm trying to look for the x values. I have the y value. Let's plug it in there. So I get 3x squared plus 2 times 0 equals 16. So x squared equals 16 thirds. And then x is going to ha have x equals plus or minus square root 16 thirds. There we go. And you could simplify that, I guess, huh? Because the square root of 16. So you could say plus or minus 4 over square root of 3. I'm going to let you use a calculator on this uh, packet and the mastery check. So in case you wanted to do decimals, you could do decimals on there to help yourself out. Uh, so these are the two vertical tangent lines. And that covers everything that we need for now for implicit differentiation. So rock that mastery check, and I will see you back in the next lesson.